chugging along with my next guest, huh? A two-time award, Emmy award winning actress, writress, comedienne, and activist who can currently be seen hosting his very own late night talk show on Hulu called I Love You America with Sarah Silverman. Please welcome Sarah Silverman! <laughs> Boy, Oberto. Hi. Oh, boy, Oberto. Yeah, I'm sponsored by them. I have to. It's a beef jerky company. How about this? <laughs> Do I have a, a, a chamois? No. Um, but this is comfortable for you, Largo, right? You're here like yeah. all the time, right? Yeah. It's a hot spot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My first time. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm so happy to have you here. This is really, I'm a, a I'm <laughs> Oh, my God, and you're the HQ guy. I'm Did the, everyone say that? Did everyone say I'm that? I just got here. Guy. I took a nap. Do, are you aware of HQ? This is how I'm aware of HQ. Oh, my God, I want my glasses to be clean. Uh, okay. You guys are nerds. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I love you. Um... <laughs> I was staying at this hotel in New York, the Bowery, uh -huh. and uh, it's in my old neighborhood. As a matter of fact, people think it's a very old hotel, but the truth is when I lived there, it was a Chevron station. <laughs> right. But anyway, oh, oh. oh my God, you just <laughs> me. Thank you, this kid's got a voice like <laughs> butter. <laughs> butter. Better? Mo better? Uh, uh, <coughs> Bowery Hotel. Sat outside, there's a little bench outside. Sat outside, and sometimes I, I'm a people person, and there are these two girls there, women. I think of them as kids, because they're younger, but they were women. definitely women. They had their periods, for sure. <laughs> and they were um, there from Argentina, and huddled over a phone, playing HQ. And I said, what are you doing? And then, for the next, like, two hours, I played HQ with them. Really? Sitting on a bench outside wow. of a hotel, and that was very fun. That's, you know what's crazy? Because I've never met you before, but I did see you at the Bowery Hotel in the lobby. You walked by, and I kind of was like, oh, I was like my friend, like, that's Sarah Silverman. I mean, that, that was the interaction I had with you. I'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget that. <laughs> hey, Sarah Silverman's here. That, that's, I'm that it guy. It was a Thursday. But that's a good hotel. You like hanging out there? That's your, your spot in New York? I do. It's cool. Nice and quiet. Yeah, they don't bother you. They respect. Nice. Well, I. It's funny because I. Um, it's kind of celebby though. Outside, mm -hmm. like there'll be like a paparazzi because there'll always be like a, a maybe a Miley Cyrus or something. Yeah. Gerard around. Butler. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and. Uh, but anyway, um, I know all the doorman and everything. Yeah. I like I like places that I just go to the same right. place over and I know the people. And um, so I would always comp jokingly complain, but like very deadpan, like nobody opened the door for me when I came in yesterday <laughs> and I was, I'm uncomfortable with that. And they know I'm kidding, but then it, there was like a blurb in the post that one of them showed me. It was like Sarah Silverman spotted complaining that a Doorman didn't open the door early, and oh it was so funny. God. It was very exciting. You got that diva rep going now. You got to be careful. It, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't think anyone really. No. Whenever uh, people, I always try to tell people like nobody's googling you, but you, mm -hmm. and definitely nobody's like putting it in order of date. <laughs> yeah. No, you're you're safe. You're Nobody safe. cares. Um, <laughs> congratulations, Sarah, on the renewal of your show, "I Love You, America" with Sarah Silverman. <laughs> Just announced last week. Amazing. New episodes in September. Yeah. Which means the next few months are gonna be crazy for you, right? You're traveling around and shooting this thing. Yeah. Do you have any idea where you're gonna go? What topics you want to cover this time? Nope. Nope. <laughs> uh, I definitely. I did have an idea today where I want to kind of audit a a day with a, a pro-life group. Mm -hmm. Just shadow. I don't have a big plan. There's no joke to it, but that's the plan oh. because... Got one in Westchester County for you. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Um, 
That's I'm, the president. I'm pro-choice, <laughs> personally. Are you the president of it? <laughs> no. But uh, I think... Did I miss a funny joke? No, nah, I'm just. No, I was. I like painting. I was a president. progressive politician in Westchester County. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Thirteen years a county legislator. Did you ever have a sex scandal? Sadly, <laughs> sadly no. I retired and got out of time. So. Uh, before the internet. That means yes. <laughs> but I do like to paint him jokingly as a right wing zealot. Uh, it's just. Yeah. Part of, you know, because like he, he he's got go the part. He looks the part, right? You do, yeah. You could. You can have a, a very position. Progressive. Very progressive, I would. He is. He is. Oh. I have a son here, so I you know, like him. So. That's true. I want to. I want to talk more about our dads later. Because um, <laughs> your dad's amazing. Yes. Uh, who shows up in "I Love You, America"? Uh, you know, you said I read an interview. You said that you, you you find yourself fundamentally changed with each episode you make of the show, every encounter, every interview you have. Yeah. But it's because you go outside of your elite liberal Hollywood bubble, you know, quote unquote. Mostly I've been fundamentally changed more f by the interviews I've been able to, to do because I, you know, um, I, there, I got to interview incredible people mm -hmm. and, you know, each one taught me something. You know, there's a Jesuit priest who started Homeboy Industries, Father Greg <laughs> Boyle. And he said, I'm not going to get it exactly, but he said, um, uh, if we don't make peace uh, um, with our wounds, then we will be tempted to despise the wounded. And I think about that on the daily. Mm. Thank We're, you. Yeah. I'm Not, I'm, just, I'm just quoting terribly uh, him. I'm expecting Kanye to tweet that any minute. That sounds like. <laughs> but uh. there's so many great. But yeah, meeting, you know, I had a family dinner with a, a family in Chalmette, Louisiana, who um, all voted for Trump. And. Um, Blaze. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's such a cute. Their son, Blaze, who I. I have a recurring dream. And the recurring dream is that. I'm doing this covert operation where we have to rescue Baron Trump. But it's, it's always Blaze. You know how like people play other people in your dreams? Right. It's Blaze. <laughs> but they, yeah, they, um, they had never uh, met a Jew, and they Googled Jew, which I love. <laughs> And I don't, I, I would have done the same thing. There are a lot, there are people's, entire people's, I'm sure I have also not encountered in my life, even in my m little more worldly right. life. Laplanders, you know? Yeah, never yeah. heard of them. Northern Finland, I think. No, yeah. never been there, don't right. know it. Ignorant yeah. to it, Ignorant. would Google it. Would Google it. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, Brandy, the, the matriarch, who's about 27, um, <laughs> She said, the, and I love them for, for the just being, uh, you know, and she, they Googled you and she goes, oh, did you know Adam Levine is one? So that was sweet. We're winning him over. One pop star is at a one. time. Is one. Adam Levine. Actually, my rabbi wants me to ask you, what's it like to have a sister as a rabbi? Um, it's good. <laughs> I'm going to see her tomorrow, actually. She's in town, but she lives in Jerusalem. My sister's a rabbi. I am godless, but we're very close. And I think she doesn't quite believe that I'm totally godless, and I don't really believe that she believes in God. I think she just likes the ritual, and she likes finding meaning in everyday things, which is beautiful, and you don't have to have God to do, but you, you can. I mean, I think the Torah is more, well, the Bible, I mean, I think of it as art to be interpreted yeah, and, guidelines and for it to change as the world changes and as you change, just like art. Yeah. And you can be changed by it. You can have it guide your life. But, you know, it doesn't mean that there's like a man in the sky. The I have been cunty to, oh, is this a, do we not swear? In, oh, sorry. no, this is, this is. I haven't kind of, well, even she, like on Yom Kippur, she'll call and say, I'm just calling you to, you know, because I'm reflecting on the year, and I just want to apologize if I was cunty to you at all. And I just like that she says cunty. cunty. I'm like, oh, Rabbi. The rabbi who says cunty. And this is, this is a very reformed congregation. Slightly reformed. Slightly reformed. <laughs> yeah. Um, they allow instruments and 
the C word. <laughs> Instruments. Oh, well, yeah, these reformer synagogues, they, they allow music on Shabbat. They play guitar, which is, you know, you're not supposed oh, to Oh, really, I yeah. did not know yeah. that. We're from a conservative background. That was the president of the synagogue, the JCCH. Oh, and it was a conservative synagogue? No playing instruments on the, on the Shabbat. No I just explained that. Yeah, 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 that's but uh, <laughs> my dad... Uh, so all my nieces and nephews come from the rabbi sister. There's four of us gir uh, girls in the family, four sisters, and none of us are married or have kids except for one, the rabbi, and she has five kids and she's married. And so all the kids, when they come to visit their grandfather, my father, um, he has no religion, and he'll, on Friday he'll go, uh, this is a Shabbat TV, and this is a Shabbat, you know, whatever. <laughs> this is a Shabbat car, it's okay. It's, uh, it's like every, everything is the Shabbos goy. Right, right. <laughs> I love that. Make, making your own, I, yeah, that's, I think that's what But it is like making be. up rules. But it is, making up rules. If and you're going to base your whole life on s some strangers yeah. who made up a bunch of rules, yeah. I think you can make up and some I'd of those rules. I make my own rules. You know, I've adapted it myself. I mean, you know, I don't, I try to keep kosher like, with, like milk and meat, but at the same time, I love lobster and, <laughs> and shrimp and shellfish. So like, you know. Yeah, it's I'll, funny, I'll you, you're not wearing a yarmulke, no. but you look like you're wearing a yarmulke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I look like a Hollywood type. I mean, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking about selling yarmulkes as merch. How about that? Rogowski yarmulkes as merch? I, I'm think, that's, I think that's a great HQ, idea. HQ yarmulkes? <laughs> I, think, I think we need to make this happen. Anything that helps make people not hate Jews just across the board. Right, is right. Probably I'm doing good. my part. But you, and you are, I mean, you, but this is... An, you know, I don't want to say this show is your creative peak because I think you'll be creating amazing things. Please don't. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, yeah, but so far, maybe. Yeah, yeah it's I, my favorite thing. I think this thing. is like the culmination. It seems to me as an outsider watching your career, like this is a culmination of, you know, all you've been doing in the comedy and politics blending it. And it's, um, it's brilliant. It really, truly, the way you, the comedy elements, I think, uh, are brilliant. I mean, having got Mather Zickel as the way the talk show host, you know, those elements. But then you really get real with these people, your guests, or the people you talk to, like, in the in Mineola, Texas, when you go down there, and I want to show a clip. Um, I mean, you're literally uh, uh, finding end arounds to commonalities by talking about rear ends. Uh, poop dog. Yeah, we we yeah. we have there's there's we can be very different in lots of ways, but we all love our families and we all care about our friends and we all have humiliating stories that involve shitting. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, this is you're talking to Trump voting, gun owning, you know gay marriage opposing fellow Americans, but about uh, something we can all relate to. Have you all ever shit your pants? That's so awful, I'm sorry, that's so rude. I'm in the South. Have y'all ever shit your pants? I got one. I got one. I met a guy. We dated two times. And we're going to the grocery store and I'm going in to get bread and I come back out and he's gone. It's like 100 degrees outside and my date is gone. Next thing I know, his sister pulls up and I'm like, Huh, where's Kevin? She goes, he shit his pants. And I was like, what? Anyways, I ended up marrying him, having two kids. Oh my and God. And I had so many poop stories about his two children, because DNA is very strong. Mineola, Texas. It's a fantastic show. You didn't share your own shit stories, by the way. You know what? That's Shitting a yourself. great irony. <laughs> Do you I have really any have a, I don't really have an epic shitting story. My best shit story is actually one of my sister's shit stories, which I, ta I think I talked about in my last special, which is, oh, but it, you can't go into it knowing it's a shit story because it's mm -hmm. a big left turn mm -hmm. thing, so I actually yeah, right. forget well, it. <laughs> I just realized that. Watch this special. Um, I'm, I'm, I love the fact also that you bring your politics to the bear so often, and... Um, uh, despite having like, I mean, you have a huge platform now, 12 million followers on Twitter, that's wild. And yet you don't let it hold you back from just being yourself and tweeting how you feel or retweeting people who make good points. I, how did you like, because I'm finding myself getting Twitter followers now I've never had before, and I'm so, I tighten up, I'm very careful about uh, certain things, because people just jump at you, but you don't. I've never even thought to be careful. Yeah. 
It's not really any kind of wisdom or philosophy. It's just the lack of thought. <laughs> it's a pure lack of thought. I've never thought about my future. I've never made a plan. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think about if will I get in trouble for this tweet, clearly. Yeah, because sometimes they do make headlines even, I mean. I mean, sometimes I make people really mad. Sometimes my own friends go crazy on me, but I, I just, I like think it's okay to learn out loud or to, you know, it's, we can't, we're suddenly in this world where people are very angry if their friends do not agree on every single aspect of every single thing across the board. There used to be a time, I, I love social media, and I think it's made the world smaller in wonderful ways, and certainly I am aware of things I never was aware of that have made me realize the insanity of the liberal bubble I've lived in for many years. But, you know, like I, I literally a few years ago looked on, was reading the news and I said, I can't believe this. There's this epidemic of cops murdering unarmed black teenagers. And then a few beats later I went, oh, this is how it's always been. I'm just aware of it now yeah. because of yeah. social media. And I was so ashamed. But all you can do, you can't erase it. You can only just be changed by it. Yeah, absolutely. It's not very funny, but. No, I mean, that's. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I do want to pivot to talk about some of your earlier work. Um, uh, uh, by the way, ha did, have you read Norm MacDonald's memoir? Um, I, I haven't because I'm a terrible friend. No. But I did hear that he there's a whole You make a cameo. Yeah, it's yeah. It's very funny. <laughs> I, I would love to just, because if you haven't read Norm MacDonald's memoir, it mixes like 20% truth with like 160% insane absurdity. Yeah. Um, uh, he, he writes that you met together in SNL in 93, your first year, which is true, right? And that he fell madly in love with you, but also became bitterly jealous of Dave Attell because you were in love with Dave or dating him. That was partially true. Um, so were you, were you aware of his feelings for you? Was that, was there any No, kind I of, think. Or this is all, because this is where it tends to get into the fanciful because he writes that he tried to ask you out. And these are the words of the book. This is the night he asked you out. You're dreadful pretty, Sarah. And I'd be honored if you would lay down with me. I will take you out to a restaurant and you can order beefsteak that I will pay for. We will coo and whisper and smile meaningful smiles and we will reduce the whole world and its people to our small table and the two of us. And then afterward I will take you to my bed and we will be like swine. I love the way he writes. Um, that is not true. As a matter of fact, he was married with a, his first child at the time. but. Yeah. I, I want people to think that that's true. Yeah, okay, I just wanted to confirm that. Uh, <laughs> but Dave Attell was my first big love. Really? Yeah, we dated for, many, for uh, off and on for many years. It was a very violent yeah. <laughs> relationship. <laughs> He's an intense guy. There were chases. There were chases. Are you on the same terms with him as you are with some of your other ex-boyfriends? Uh, Jimmy, for example. I have excellent taste in men. And I really do. And I could say pr all of my exes, it, Attell is a little shyer and we're not as close and he's New York based, but I adore him. And I think he likes me too. And, but um, er, all the other ones I have to say are um, like br my brothers. Yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand how you can love someone and then just not love them anymore. Yeah. I, like I adore them. Yeah. They're great. Great crew. I texted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're I, a great group. They're a great group. <laughs> <laughs> I texted an ex-girlfriend yesterday. We dated 10 years ago, but it's her birthday. And she has an Earth Day birthday, which I was remembered. So I text, happy birthday, spelled E-A-R-T-H. I do that like every year. It's just a weird tick. Yeah. And she's like, please lose my number. <laughs> no, 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 she's very nice. Um, you know, you, you are recently, we're talking about this. You're recently single, you announced. Mm -hmm. I don't know how recent, but you, announced. you announced it. Consciously uncoupling, right? Unconsciously, yeah. that was very cute. Um, but, you know, what are the odds here? I've got my dad here. And, um, well, he, he's a profligate. Where's this going? Well, I mean, he's a profligate cheater. And, you know, my mom is in the audience, but I thought that. I heard she's been heckling all night, <laughs> yeah. asking for Nick Kroll. <laughs> 
I don't know. I think there could be something here. I mean, you, you do love old Jews. You support you supported Bernie. And, you know, dad's up Not there. sexually. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a lot of commonalities. I mean, you, your sister runs a kibbutz in Israel, and my sister also doesn't make any money. Right. Uh, she doesn't run a kibbutz, but uh, they lived on a kibbutz. They lived on a kibbutz. Sorry, um, I really didn't need to correct that. doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a rabbi, and she was arrested at the Wailing Wall. Yeah. Yes. Well, she's changed law with her yeah. protests yeah. of I mean, women of the wall. Yeah. My, my dad was also arrested at the Wailing Wall for trying to drill a hole through it. Oh, boom. <laughs> that was a funny joke. I, I feel like they didn't get it. It was or... on a Saturday. That was the problem. It was on a Saturday. Uh. <laughs> you know what? The thing, your I'm jokes are up. very good, but they yeah. take a couple beats. They take a couple beats. It's too, it's too smart. It's too smart. It's You're awesome. a writer. I'm, I have some more jokes, Dad. You're a writer, Sarah, and my dad's a writer. In fact, he just put the finishing touches on a will. <laughs> this makes me feel so good. This is. I, I, he's very. He's being very bashful now. His, my dad. My dad tends to get tongue tied around beautiful women, especially when he hits the IUD. Oh, that's a good. That's very funny. These are more jokes that are, are go in a joke book. Right. 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 <laughs> right. They take to camp. Right. What, but Which they I, make sense, they track, I've they are seven technically years. funny. I've waited seven years for, for this moment, for this opportunity. Marty will never go Dutch on a date, so, um, but he, he does go Jewish. He complains and get the meals, <laughs> gets the meals comped. That's going Jewish. And uh, you should know his idea of going Dutch. His idea of going Dutch. Oh, I heard it. Is, is, <laughs> is dressing you like Anne Frank and hiding you in his attic. Okay, that's funny. Um, all right, well, I guess I'll. Uh... Oh, I want to give you what you wanted. I want to give you what you need. I knew there was You're... a reason why I'm on the stage tonight. <laughs> the whole reason I brought you here for this bit that sank. Sarah, all these years, this is what I have to put up with. This is not just today. I love this. Aww. I love that you are. You don't do the. <laughs> I mean, you're real. You keep oh. it real. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a lot of talk shows. You know how it is. We're, we're, I watched all of your Letterman appearances. Bill Maher. I watched them all. Did, do you do you get high before? Is that the thing? Do you, do you like to get high before those appearances? I am one of the rare stoner comedians that does not get high. I get high really? when all work is done and I have nothing responsible I need to do because I have been very funny high, but it's a grab bag. Mm. And I don't need more distractions because I get easily, I'm already easily distracted and I, I need more like focus. So I, I get, um, if anything, I have a little caffeine before mm. I go on. Well, some of those might have been... Uh, I'm a teetotaler. A teetotaler, yeah. I talk about myself like I'm a stoner, and I do enjoy marijuana, but um, really, I, the truth is, I, I don't drink at all, and I'll just have, like, a little puff before bed. Oh. I'm glad Sorry. glad you cleared that up. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I, uh, it's such a pleasure talking to you. Um, I, I want to close on a... Uh, an old a, a joke? Yeah. <laughs> Th thank you. Uh, I have so much to get to, Sarah, but we're... There's so much, I want to talk more about Schleppy, your dad, and how supportive he is. And yeah, but you got, you had to get those sweet jokes I had out. to get those jokes <laughs> out. <laughs> Can I ask about, um, I mean, you, you, you've made so many guest appearances on some of the best shows ever made. Uh, Larry Sanders, I got some pictures hey, here. Hey. Gary, yeah, I mean, Larry Sanders, Frasier, you were on an episode, and uh, Seinfeld which uh, I want to show a clip from, because it's just like, it's funny, I think, uh, you and Michael Richards in bed. Let's, let's take a look at this. Well, that was all right. Yeah. Well, um, good night. Good
version of this. <laughs> you have no recollection of sharing about Michael Richards. I remember How often do you think about that scene in your day-to-day -day life now? No, he, he was mean to me, actually. Really? Well, uh, he's a fine guy, I don't know, but <laughs> I was so nervous. And uh, we were, that was the, f the first scene we shot was in a scene in bed. And he's scared. We shot out of order. It wasn't like without an audience. And then he, uh, my line, he's scared. And then my line is, it was probably the, the wind. And I was nervous. And I said, it's probably the rain. And then he breaks out of character and he goes, do you see rain in that window? And I said, no. And he goes, well, then why would you say rain? And I was just, I guess I didn't have the hoods, but to be like, because we're pretending we're on a set. There's no ceiling. <laughs> but it stunned me. And then the next day, we were shooting in Monk's Diner. And he was talking to me like a, he, I was his best friend. He's like, oh, I'm shopping for houses and blah, blah, blah. And, blah, 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 blah. and he just went on and on. And then I, when he stopped talking, I go, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were friends. <laughs> love to hear that you're friends with Michael Ridges. Uh, I love you, America. Season two. Have the best time with it. Thank you. And I can't wait to watch Hulu. it. It's Hulu. Hulu. app. It's just like Netflix. Yeah. Pick it up. Sarah Silverman, everybody. Yeah. My goodness. Sarah Silverman.